you very much, Mr. Williams. Good afternoon, fellow citizens and residents of the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis. I wish to give God thanks for his grace and for the faith by which we have safely come this far. I wish also to express sincere thanks to the NEOC for allowing me to address you on behalf of the St. Kitts Christian Council and the St. Kitts Evangelical Association. Ever since our world has been beset by the new coronavirus, even before it was deemed a pandemic, it became clear that large gatherings were a catalyst to the spread of this contagion. Many religious leaders of various world religions and faiths determined, as did like-minded people of 102 years ago, that to spare illness and to save lives, it would be prudent to close our sanctuaries and retreat for our safety. Unlike the very early ancestors of our faith, whose lives were threatened by emperors and kings, we did not have to hide in catacombs as they did in Alexandria, or in caves as John did on the Isle of Patmos. We, the faithful of 2020, only had to retreat to our home. We, unlike the ancients, have been blessed with the technology of the day, and so we were able to continue our worship of God on a variety of platforms. These innovations have worked very well for some, but for others, it was like singing the Lord's song in a strange land, quote unquote. We yearn for what was, the familiar, the fulfilling worship of the house of the Lord. Like the Jews in Babylon and later Persia, there was a clamor to return to the Holy of Holies. In one of our several meetings with the NEOC with regards to the returning to the sanctuary for worship, one of the clergy prayed for us to be back by May 31st, the Feast of Pentecost, or Whit Sunday, described by some as the birthday of the church, when we celebrate the outpouring of God's Spirit upon the disciples and upon natives and visitors to Jerusalem alike. The Prime Minister has indicated that, like Ezra and Nehemiah, we have been allowed to return to the house of the Lord effective tomorrow. That is good news for all of us. Nevertheless, we must sound a cautionary note. Because we have the right to enter into our sanctuary, it does not mean that it would be right for some of us to enter. We must wait until we are completely satisfied that it is a safe environment. Some of us have seen circulating a draft result of the joint discussions of the NEOC and the church. These are not written in stone, nor are they the laws of the Medes and the Persians. We will continue to dialogue and Pastors and church leaders will be discussing that draft with their members and likely changes may be made after we seek to implement that which thus far has been discussed and committed to paper. I exhort you that when your place of worship is opened, that you must observe all the protocols, including proper sanitizing on entrance and exit, the observance of social and physical distancing, the wearing of your masks during the entire service, etc., etc. My brothers and sisters, 
The new Jerusalem will be quite unlike the one we left behind in March. You may not be able to sit in your favorite seat, sing the number of hymns to which you have become accustomed, or to stay in church as long as you like. Indeed, the outer limits would be 90 minutes. We remind you that safety is paramount. The onus then will be on all worshipers to cooperate with your pastors to ensure that order prevails. We do not wish for any infringements of the protocols, nor do we wish to see any external enforcement. We must therefore, quote unquote, police ourselves. May God grant us the wisdom and guide us on this leg of our Christian journey and ministry as together we fellowship in a new place in time and circumstance. Amen.